So Alec Baldwin has lost the bid, his bid to dismiss um, the involuntary manslaughter case that he's a part of. Um, his lawyers tried to argue for the dismissal. Prosecutors, they, they basically argue that during the grand jury indictment, prosecutors withheld information from or evidence from the grand jury that would have, you know, exonerated Baldwin. Um, they also claim that the instructions to the jury was inaccurate. And they also argue that some of the witness testimonies that people gave conflicted with those people's testimonies in the trial of the armorer on the Rust film, Hannah Gutierrez Reed. Um, so that there's like a, there's contradictions in their statements and ultimately they shouldn't be used as like the primary, you know, motivations to indict. Ultimately, though, the New Mexico District Court Judge Mary Marlowe Sommer, that's a long time, New Mexico District Court Judge Mary Marlowe Sommer denied Baldwin's motion, saying, quote, the prosecutor has broad discretion as to what evidence to present to or exclude from the grand jury, and courts will not review any good faith decisions the prosecutor makes in that regard once an indictment is returned. There is no post-indictment relief for an indictment once the grand jury returns an indictment. That's a lot of indictments. A grand jury returns an indictment absent a showing of prosecutorial prosecutorial bad faith, end quote. So basically the argument is the prosecution did everything they were supposed to do and it doesn't seem like they did anything willfully in with any kind of willful malicious intent. So Baldwin, you know, for better or for worse, he's not happy about this. He's still on track to go on trial in July and he faces 18 months in prison. So again, this is all in the context of uh, the involuntary manslaughter that he was charged with in the death of Helene Hutchins when he was on the film set, uh, on the set for the film Rust in 2021 in New Mexico. Um, kind of like this like Western, really low budget Western film. And he accidentally shot her with a prop gun, um, fatally injuring her. Um, he's pleaded not guilty on a couple, for a couple of reasons. Number one, his argument is that as an actor, he's not in charge of set safety. Um, you know, he had no reason to suspect that there was a live round in the gun. Um, you know, he claims even that someone shouted cold gun on set when he was handed the gun. So, you know, meaning that it's, it's a safe gun, um, as safe as a gun can be, even with a blank. Um, and Baldwin also, there, his team released a statement saying, quote, Hutchins, like Baldwin, clearly believed that the gun was cold. Um, so I'm going to interrupt this quote because I believe Baldwin claims that, you know, she was directing him. Like, oh, no, like, point the gun towards the camera. Point the gun to the camera. So his team said, quote, Hudgens, like Baldwin, clearly believed that the gun was cold. Had there been any doubts between them, she would not have instructed him to point the gun in her direction, and he would not have done so, end quote. Um, he also argues he did not pull the trigger, which forensics has contradicted. Um, you know, I think they did some forensics, and, and the results basically said that this would not have been able to discharge had he not squeezed the trigger. So... I don't believe he's lying. He probably, I just, I believe that he believes what he's saying. But chances are maybe he just kind of squeezed it a little too tightly and that and that went off. Um, ultimately, I mean, I've done a couple of videos about this um, on my channel, which about the, um, the, the, the trial for, again, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, who was the armorer. Um, her defense kind of argued that she was like a scapegoat for the whole thing. And so I've talked about this before, but my kind of take on this whole situation is I'm in agreement with uh, Baldwin in the sense that I do not believe he as the actor is responsible, right? Um, again, he was told it's a cold gun. There was never any plan. Like, no one would even need to say it's a cold gun because there was never any plan for there to be a live round. No one is quite sure how a live round got in there. Um... You know, he had no reason to believe that this was... It was not his job to like, oh, let me open it up and make sure. That would not be his job. But I do believe he is responsible, if not as the actor, as the producer. Because he was also a producer on this film. And oftentimes when things like this happen on a film set, it's often because producers are trying to cut corners to save money. Um, and it ultimately created unsafe working conditions. You know, there is evidence that was used in the trial. I don't think it's been publicly released, but videos of Baldwin in between takes like rushing the crew, you know, again, because time is money. And also Baldwin is a infamous prima donna, right? You know, it's definitely one of those kind of actors. Um, so, you know, I don't think he's responsible as an actor, but as a producer who created this unsafe work environment, I think he is 100% responsible. Um, now, I don't know if that creates 
a legal issue where because they're charging him as if as because of he was the one who pulled the trigger. I think honestly he would be on. Tri- I think he should be on trial even if it was a different actor who did it because again he's the one that created the problem, not exclusively, but you know, definitely, definitely, um, you know, again created the conditions for something downstream to happen, um, for a tragedy to happen downstream. 